Hello. When I was about nine years old, I had a teacher called Mrs. Jones. And she was a fantastic teacher and I loved her a lot. And she read me the best story that I had ever heard at the age of nine. And it was by a man called David Henry Wilton. And the book was called Elephants Don't Sit on Cards. I'm going to read you the first story out of this book. It's one of my favourites. Before I begin, everyone, I want to say a quick hello to a couple of my special little friends. One of them is my little nephew, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. I love you. Mana, mana. And the other person that I want to say hello to is actually, funnily enough, also called Ethan. Hi, Ethan from Sanderlin. And hi, Alina. How are you? It's good to see you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading you a story. Okay. The Elephant on Daddy's Car. Mummy, said Jeremy James, there's an elephant sitting on Daddy's car. Yes, dear, said Mummy, eyes fixed on dough, fixed on hands, fixed on table. Mummy, why is the elephant sitting on Daddy's car? I expect it's tired, dear. It'll probably get up and go away soon. Well, it hasn't, said Jeremy James two minutes later. It hasn't got up. The car's gone down, but the elephant hasn't got up. Mummy, do you think I ought to tell Daddy? No, no, leave your father alone, said Mummy. You know he hates being interrupted when he's working. Daddy's watching a football match on TV. If Daddy says he's working, he's working. Well, there's an elephant sitting on his car, said Jeremy James. Mummy thumbed sultanas into the dough to make eyes and noses. And the car doesn't look very happy about it, said Jeremy James. Jeremy James, said Mummy, elephants don't sit on cars. Well, this one does. Elephants don't sit on cars. If Mummy says elephants don't sit on cars, dear, then elephants don't sit on cars. But they don't. Finish. Now go and play with your train set. Jeremy James sat on the carpet and played with his train set and thought about the elephant on Daddy's car and thought about how stubborn mummies can be when they want to be and how if he was a mummy and his son said there was an elephant on Daddy's car he would say, what a clever boy and thank you for telling me and here's some money for some ice cream instead of just elephants don't sit on cars. Goal, said the television set in the living room. Goal, said Daddy, hard at work. And the elephant was still sitting on Daddy's car. Mummy, said Jeremy James, for the latest development really couldn't be ignored. Mummy, the elephant has just done its number two all over Daddy's car. But Mummy's face merely twitched like a fly flicking an elephant's ear. And she said nothing. Gosh, and what a number two, Mummy. Mummy, you should see the size of this elephant's number two. Mummy, why do elephants do such big number twos? I can't do a number two like that. Mine isn't even a thousandth as big as that number two. What a number two. Jeremy James, if you go on talking like that, I shall send you straight to bed. Now play with your train set and let's have no more elephants. Um, and certainly no more number twos. Do you hear? Yes, Mummy. No number twos? Anyone would think that number twos were unhealthy. Only look what happened when you didn't do a number two. Then it was, Jeremy James, have you done your number two? You haven't done your number two? Then you sit there until you have. And now... You tell them that there's an elephant that's done its number two on Daddy's car and suddenly it's rude. Why can't grown-ups make up their minds? Jeremy James played with his train set. Jeremy James looked out the window. The elephant was gone. 
Mummy, said Jeremy James. What is it now, said Mummy, half in and half out of the oven. The elephant's gone. Humph. That was a typical grown-up word, humph. It was for grown-ups only and meant whatever they want it to mean. Jeremy James had tried to use a humph once himself. Mummy had said, have you done your number two? At one of those times when number two wasn't rude. And he'd replied, humph, because it was how grown-ups got out of awkward questions like, will you buy me something nice today? Or why can't I have a toy racing car like Timothy's? Only Jeremy James obviously didn't know how to use it because Mummy had told him to speak properly, even though he thought he'd said humph perfectly properly. Daddy came out of the sitting room with his face as long as an elephant's nose. They lost, said Daddy, right at the end, an own goal. Then Daddy leaned on the kitchen doorpost as he always did when he'd been working and sometimes when he was working. And he watched Mummy working, presumably to make sure that she was doing everything right. Jeremy James had tried leaning on the doorpost once and saying, as Daddy always ended up saying, Will it be long, dear? But instead of getting Mummy's normal humph, he'd had a sort of now don't you start and been sent off to play with his train set, which he was sick of anyway. Will it be long, dear? said Daddy. Humph, said Mummy. Now don't you start, said Jeremy James quietly. An own goal, said Daddy, right at the end. Was that goal number two, asked Jeremy James. I don't know what's got into that child, said Mummy. Daddy elbowed himself upright off the doorpost, took one hand out of one pocket. Take your hands out of your pockets, Jeremy James. Yawned and announced, maybe I'll go and clean the car. Mummy didn't say there won't be time before tea, although Daddy waited quite a while for her to say it. And so Daddy eventually left the kitchen, crossed the dining room, entered the hall, opened the door and went out of the house. Jeremy James stood at the window and wondered what new words Daddy might use. Daddy didn't use any words though. Daddy's mouth just fell open and then Daddy came back to the house and he opened the front door and he entered the hall and he crossed the dining room and he held himself upright by the kitchen doorpost. The car, said Daddy, and then his mouth opened and shut several times as if he'd just been pulled out of water. The, the car, he said again. What's the matter with it? asked Mummy, spreading hand cream all over the bread. It's, it, it, it's been ruined. It, it, it's ruined. It looks as if it's been completely squashed. Completely and, and utterly squashed. Oh, John, said Mummy, who only called Daddy John when she was very upset or when she wanted some money. Oh, John, there, there isn't some cause sort of um, dung all over it, is there? Yes, said Daddy, there jolly well is. I've never seen anything like it either. Must have been a herd of cows dancing on the thing. It wasn't a herd of cows, said Jeremy James. It was an elephant and I saw it and I told Mummy, but she wouldn't listen. An elephant, said Daddy. You saw an elephant on the car? Yes, said Jeremy James, and I saw it do its number two as well. Then why on earth didn't you tell me? Humph, said Mummy. And Jeremy James went to play with his train set. That's the end of my story today. And I'll tell you another one very soon. Bye.